hi guys welcome back to my channel as always it's a pleasure for you guys to visit my channel thank you so much my name is diana and this is creativity inc and today in my cave i have a as you guys probably saw from the picture of the thumbnail of the video i have a cage bird cage spine book now i have i pick up this um wire from the trash from uh I went to a place and it was just on the trash and I, 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 I mean, even if it was in the trash, I still asked if I could have it. And, um, but it was all bent up and, um, made into like a ball. I think it was what they had the, they wrapped their pallets with. And so, um, I had to straighten it up. And so I, it's just easy. Just kind of play with it while, um, with the pliers. It's hard. It's really hard. I don't know the thickness of it, but it, I don't know if you guys could tell, but I really, had to use my strength with this it was really hard um, <clears throat> it was really hard especially to cut um, so what I did is like play with it as you guys can see on the video and you know I speed it up but I was with it for a while so I mean it's gonna be pretty sturdy cage but it did it, it does hurt your hand um, so warm up your hands like uh, rub them against each other and then you warm up your hands and then they don't hurt you as much Anyways, so what I did is, uh, once I have it straight, I got a form, like a cup, I got a cup, and I cupped uh, half of, the, well, you'll see, I, I cupped only half of the form. So in a sense, what I'm doing is, um, you guys can see on top of my, uh, the, the cover that I have, that I'm on working on top of, that's actually going to be the cover pages of my journal, but you guys can see those like rings, those ring binders. So in a sense, that's what I'm doing. I'm working on making something similar. I can't make something that clicks on like, you know, those ring binders, but I'm going to make something that hooks onto itself or, um, well, that was the goal, right? But what ended up happening is that I put the two hooks together, like uh, one on top of each other. And then I put something through it so it holds like um, sort of like a lock you know so um, that's what I'm doing so um, once I did half then I'll do the other half and do the same thing now on one on the one side that you're gonna hinge together remember you're gonna go opposite so uh, one goes kind of sideways and the other one goes down so it kind of makes a, a hinge sort of if, if that's what I would call it so it hinges together so what I'm gonna do is hook them together then kind of close the loop a little bit more so the hinge doesn't come apart when you're trying to open the latch or the little uh, lock it together once I've done both two of those I will start by um, grabbing another piece of wire and attaching by looping the I don't know if you guys could see by I looped around both of the um, of the I guess I would call them rings uh, locking rings I don't know um, so once I looped around one then I went and, and I left uh, some wire and then I looped the other one around and I went up sort of like to make start making the birdcage but at the same time it's going to be uh, looping around the half one half of the of the cage so my goal is to only loop around one half. So both of the wire that goes, um, that starts from the bottom goes up and come down again. It's going to loop only to the same half because the other half, you want it to be moving. You want to be able to open that half the, that, and then um, so you can access your paper um, because this is going to be not only the bird cage, but it's also going to hold your paper in. So if you have um, the paper, I mean the the latch, um, I mean the wire, <laughs> sorry, the wire um, not connected to it, then it's going to like come apart all the journal together when you open the latch. So I wanted to have some stability by looping around one half. So it gives me that sturdy structure, that sturdy sort of like a U and um and so when I open it, it, it still ha that U still stays sturdy and it doesn't move it around once I, I'm able to work on my journal.
Once you're done with that whole first half of the structure, make sure you close the bottom of it. Make sure um, that it's done in a flat surface so that you're able to stand your book on the shelf. And it also looks like a birdcage at the end of the day. Okay, once you've done um, half of the uh, birdcage, you go back with another piece of wire and you do the opposite side, but you know, like in a cross kind of way. So I'm going to loop around that half of the hinge thing. Um, I'm going to loop around the middle, the center of that loop, and then I'm going to free stand the other half once I loop the birdcage all the way around. So that um, I, the hinge that closes, the, the part that closes, the closure part, and it's also the ring binder kind of part, which, where my papers are going to um, be attached to, that can open and close at, with no problem. So make sure that the wire that goes, that loops around that side is the, in the inside of the uh, latch that opens, not on the outside because then you won't be able to open it. But. I mean, it, some things kind of make sense, like, you know, I know that sometimes I like say things that like, I don't know, it's just some things that like, when I'm, I hear other artists uh, explain things, things that make sense are like, oh yeah, that makes sense, you shouldn't do that. And so they help me. So sometimes I will say things like that, just because sometimes things are like, really clear and obvious, sometimes they're not so clear when you're trying to learn something or see something that you're trying to to reproduce and so uh, anyway so what I what I did on this case though is I made a circle uh, around the base of the of the birdcage so that it's so that it mimics the same size of circle on the latches or on the ring binders I don't know what you would call them but so that it makes mimics that so in a sense it would be the third ring so um, it went all the way around and then came back and closed it with another like loopy thingy imaging. To prepare the covers, I cut off the spine and I resealed the, the part that it's uh, like open uh, to the, the where the spine would be. In order to close that part, I'm going to use the strips that came off a binder, like a fold, folder file folder that you guys saw me take apart about two weeks ago on the Traveler Kit little um, book that I made. So these are the strips uh, that I took off that book. And so what I did is I just closed it up and cut, glued it, uh, glued the ends off and um, cut the, the excess off. So I'm, I'm going to play with my colors and I'm going to do basic colors, which is, um, white gray and black so my base is going to be white as you guys can see my book was red uh, so i'm going to uh, do a couple layers of this um white now it's a thick white so it won't it i think it only took me like i don't know two two passes as you guys can see like it doesn't the red doesn't come across that much and since i know i'm going to be using black for my edges i don't even bother with uh, with going with white on my edges so two coatings after, I start playing with what my colors would be. So I start, um, when I paint and I color, I usually start from lightest to darkest. Uh, my darkest is my, like, in a sense, always my accent color. So what I do is I play with it at the end because colors, light colors, you could always cover over them. But dark colors, you really can't. So I go um, very carefully and start adding little by little on the dark color. So as you guys can see, I'm creating sort of like a border. Now, I didn't wait for my my last coat to dry yet. So they, the white kind of blends in with the gray, but it did dry a little bit. So it's like semi-dry. Um, it, it, um, it allows some blending, but at the same time keeping the gray gray. You guys know what I mean? Of course you guys know what I mean. The other artist. So I'm gonna let that dry and I'm gonna do the same thing to the other half. 
after that, my next step would definitely be the black. And I I use a dripping method, you know, where you put a black and then you water it down and you kind of drip it from one side and then turn it around and drip it and drip it and drip. And I just pretty much play with that color. Now, I know this book uh, is a little bit on the crazy side, on the wild side, and uh, I'm aware of this book being really out there. But I feel like you guys can take this idea, create it yourself, create it your own, in your own way. You know, um, I've over-exaggerated this birdcage spine. I've been wanting to do one for a while because I love working with wire, and I feel like it's such a fun uh, way of creating things that are sturdy and looking, um, I don't know, fun. But um, I feel like, you know, I can see you guys creating it in your own way. Kind of like just a position where you grab something that is, you know, a style or an art form of somebody else and you create it in your own way. You create uh, a birdcage, maybe smaller, maybe, you know, the different wire, maybe, you know, I don't know. I mean, are you guys are the artists out there. This is just an idea that, you know, it's a wild idea and I'm aware of that. But I feel like, you know, and, and at the end of the day, it's not that functional like other books that I've made before. Um, it is functional, but it's not like, I don't know. I don't actually, I don't know because I haven't used it. So I don't know how functional it would be. I feel like it might not be so user friendly, but at the end of the day, I haven't used it like to journal. So <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I just feel it feels like. Like it might not be comfortable to work on. But, you know, at the end of the day, once if you take out the pieces of paper and work them out and then put it back in there, that's definitely functionable. But, like, you work on the journal itself, I don't know. I don't think so. Anyway, so after I've done all the dripping so that you don't see the dripping lines so much, I do the brushing technique and I brush in black. In, remember, a little bit at a time dry 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 brush I mean if I have to go over a hundred times I do that but that's because I want I want to see the dripping but not as much I don't want it to be so drippy drippy so I'm just blending in you know all the three colors so they don't seem like one's like tossed and thrown on top of the other and I just go back and forth as you guys uh, know about painting you know it's all about going back and forth like the problem is not going back and forth and all the time you waste on that the problem is, at the end of the day, is when do you stop? <laughs> For me, I can paint. This is my favorite part of any project, is the painting. The painting is my um, most favorite part of the whole project, always and forever. Anyways, I go back with my coffee water. And um, I go back and forth. I spray some. I take it off. I put it back in there. And I also, I'm also doing this before the black paint uh, dries so you guys will see you'll will see that the black will start wickering onto the coffee water and you guys some of the coffee water is going to be darker than others but that's because of the the black that it would grab some of the um, black paint and then like bring it out more um, for the inside you know since we are doing a birdcage theme um, I have this uh, planner thing like a desk planner thing um it's not a planner what are they called oh wait what it, it says on there weekly like schedules and so i love it i've never used it because i love the paper but at the same time you should use it right because you love it <laughs> so um i'm going to use the end the cover on it i know it has some lines i don't know if you guys can you don't you guys can't really see them but it has the lines um on there but at the end of the day, they're just lines, and I'm going to use it as long as I feel, as long as I cut out that the words, the weekly planner, um, I can still use the paper and make it be like paper. So I'm going to um, measure my ends and cut them off, and that will be the inside of the front cover and the back cover. Once I'm done with my... Um, preparing my front and my uh, front and back cover. I'm going to mark where the the top of the top loop and the bottom of the bottom loop so that the wire that I'm going to use to hold my 
my front and my back cover loops around them and kind of holds on to them so it doesn't wiggle up and down so it stays in one whole place at all times and i'm going to use this uh eyelids i don't know where i got these from um if i find where i got them from i will let you guys uh i will link uh, um uh, put a link on the bottom. They're not your typical eyelids. They're uh, they have a wide ring on the on the bottom. I mean around. So um, I just like how it looks, and I like using that that gold antique gold on when I use a lot of black. It just it stands out more. So I'm also gonna use the gold wire, and I'm gonna do um, sort of like if I was using string, go around the the inside. I mean put it inside. And then go around the cover and then bring it back inside and then do it like like you know the bread wire that you do you I'm gonna just twist 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 and tighten it so that uh, it stays on there and doesn't wiggle but at the same time you don't want to tighten it that much because these are gonna be your covers so you want to be able to open the book without like um, any problems and you want it to open all the way open all the way flat because the book will open all the way flat on the covers. So you want to give yourself uh, tightness in the structure. But at the same time, you want to give yourself um, some, you know, lean way to play with. And because I don't want to cut myself with the wires, what I do is I'll grab two pliers and I twist it around with the pliers. I don't use my fingers because... It's, it, you know, the wire tends to be a little bit sharp if you use your fingers. So what I do is my technique is just to use the pliers to pull it through. And here you go. This is how the book will lay flat on you. Uh, you'll have the bird cage in the middle. Now I feel like the, uh, the papers could be done in different ways here. Like I could have attached the papers to the covers themselves sort of like a lap book and have the cage in the in the middle without it having and holding papers but I, I wanted to play with the idea of the cage rings also being like binder rings but at the same time I feel like it could be a good idea if you also attach the papers to or whatever it is you want to use to the um, cover itself um, so that it looks, it is more like a lap book rather than like a regular, um, book that you bind in the center, you bind it at the end. For the paper, it was nothing special, nothing in particular. It was just, uh, you know, regular 8 by 10 folded in half, coffee, coffee stained, or coffee dyed, I don't know, one of those two. <laughs> and, um, just folded in half and I hope punched it like a regular school paper would be. Because the book or the journal is so wild, I'm going to use a closure. And for that, I'm going to use the, um, it's like a sleeve, kind of like zip tie from the jacket that I took apart that I got at the flea market. I got this jacket. You guys see me use it on many, many of my videos. I have this flea market jacket that, um, that has a lot of like little things that I can use from it. So in this case, I'm using this closure I think it's from the sleeve if I remember correctly yes I think it's from the sleeve so what I'm doing is I'm just pretty much just cleaning it up a little bit and I'm going to attach one you know uh, one half to one half to the back and one half to the front and I'm going to let it leave it loose because I know that once you start filling it up that sucker will really um, you know start looking like a crocodile more and more so I'm going to like give it a lot of space to expand but at the same time uh, I wanted to be able to control it because this journal is a little wild a little crazy so I wanted to have some kind of closure to it and um, this is what I had now for the decoration in the front I grabbed some of the leftovers of that paper that in paper that I used for the inside and I made little tags of them like where the feathers would be and I'm using the tags to also decorate my front. So I liked um, I like the contrast with the feathers and the metal because it's like soft and hard and so um, and also like you know the birds being like I don't know something pure and I don't know, like innocent you know so and the black 
it's like a contrasting kind of journal theme so I'm going to go with that so I'm gonna add more metal to my cover I usually don't do my covers so decorated because I feel that the main attention to your book is mostly gonna be the spine because well when you put it on the shelf um, that's pretty much what you see is your spine and you know you kind of know the theme you know of the book you read the title of your book on the spine and to me a spine and the spine art is 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 kind of like important <laughs> well it is always important but I, I, I feel like I want to put more I, I've been feeling like I should put more importance on the spine because of it so I'm adding you know little things that I had here and there I had a lot of like metal ephemera that I usually don't use and so I'm using it here I grabbed um because I have that huge key I wanted to have a, a keyhole and I didn't know where to put it because I made this other tag with the feathers from the because you remember I had two papers and both have the same ephemera and I didn't want to put a, both of them on the same cover but I wanted to use it so what I'm doing here is I'm using like uh, that coffee paper coffee water and distressing my my little tag thing that I made I put I think it says happiness on there with the other feather and what I'm going to use that for is I'm going to use um, I'm gonna sign my journal as you guys know makers label and so I'm just gonna sign my journal here on this tab and I'm gonna attach it to the back of the book to um, because I like, I, I feel like everybody should sign their journals and everybody should have a maker's label. So what I do is I sign it and then I date it. I don't they put like today's date, I put the year I made the journal on. And with that, we finished the video. I wanted to show you what the birds I put in there. I put a, my son, as you guys know before, he makes origami birds. He, he's just an origami master, as he calls himself. And um, I hung them in there. I use a little thin wire to make a little like swing for the birds inside so I can use two. And then I also painted some of, I grabbed some of that blue that's on the feathers and on the eggs and I put it on the some of the metal pieces so they stand out and a little bit on the birds. And um, here it is. Thank you guys for watching. Thank you guys for uh, commenting, liking, my videos they mean the world to me and I do appreciate it. It inspires me to make more stuff and I hope it inspires you to make your own stuff. I made this journal about a, maybe a month ago and I also use a bird cage on the front. Uh, the birds were also made by my son and um, you know this is another way you guys can do a bird cage. There's many ways. Thank you guys. Bye.